Okay, welcome everyone to the Social Media Marketing Course 101. We are going to be showing you today how to develop a marketing plan. Today we're going to start with a brief introduction, get right into the webinar, and then we'll leave with questions. Now today's webinar is based off of our Social Media 101 course. So this video, or I'm sorry, this webinar that we're showing you today is part of that sequence in that course. So if you know anyone who would benefit from today's session, um, they will probably benefit from the whole course. So refer them to us. If you refer someone and they sign up for the class, then you do get a $50 gift card to use on Amazon.com. So up to this point in the Social Media one, Marketing 101 course, uh, this would be the third day. And what we would have gone over so far is how to define social media, reasons why social media is so important. I would have shared two case studies with you, introduced some social media sites, and gone over the importance of social media marketing. We would have gone over a lot of other items as well, such as introducing you to blogs, different blog sites, how to integrate into your business website, and so on and so forth. And for this class, um, for today's session, what we would do is introduce you to Facebook, come up with a marketing plan for Facebook, introduce Twitter, and also do a marketing plan for Twitter. And then we would do steps for marketing on any social media platform, measuring social media, and budgeting. But for today's session, what we're going to be doing is strictly sticking to the marketing plan. How do you develop a marketing plan? And so I normally, for this webinar, give you just some brief information about how to do that, kind of go into social media and why it's so important to be on there and have a marketing plan. However, I'm not going to do that today. We want to take a different approach with this webinar today um, as opposed to what we've done in the past. And the reason for that is as you can see by looking at this diagram, there are hundreds of social media platforms out there to spread the word about your business or your product. And everyone knows that. Everyone who's attending today knows um, about some of the social media platforms, others you've never even heard of. Um, I claim to be a social media guru and there are some that I've never even heard of. So, um, you know, there's just too many coming out. There's just too many that do too many different things. Some things are important and others are not. And so to engross yourself into all of these and ex think that you need these expectations where you have to be on all of these platforms is just crazy because you don't have to. And currently I'm writing a book on social media and a lot of people always say, well, is this just a fad? Is it going to be around in the next 10 years? What do you think? Um, I've helped over 2,500 businesses um, do their social media marketing plans so far and um, most have been successful, the ones that carry through the plan. And to be quite honest with you, I think that if something is working now, you need to be using it. And social media definitely is working now for companies that know how to utilize it. Is it going to be around in the next 10 years? To be quite honest with you, with the trends that I've been seeing and the social networks that I've been monitoring, I don't believe so. That doesn't mean that I don't believe in social media and I don't believe in what I'm going to be telling you today and I don't believe in what I practice to my clients because I do. I believe it very wholeheartedly. That's why I'm writing a book on it. And that's why I continue to help companies. But to be completely honest with you, I don't think it will be around in the next 10 years. I think it's a way for startups to start right now during this down economy to come up with new ideas of spreading information. I think that it's working for companies right now uh, if they know how to utilize it correctly. And if something's working, keep using it. Um, the reason why I don't think it'll be around in the next 10 years is just by looking at this chart. Now, this chart was made two years ago. So obviously, you know, there's thousands of platforms now. Um, and, you know, like I said at the beginning, not everybody has heard of all of them. Even I haven't. And there's a reason for that because they haven't gained popularity. Um, there's no success with them. And 
quite, to be quite honest, when I'm on my Facebook page, I have 600 and something people who are on there. And to be quite honest with you, I noticed that less than half of those people are posting anymore. And what they are posting is significant milestones in their life. Babies being born, buying houses, somebody's dead, um, you know, those types of things. And that's the only thing that they're posting. I don't see them promoting their companies anymore. I don't see them giving out good, useful information anymore. So you might say, well, that's just your personal contacts, you know, people you went to school with, yada, yada. Okay. Well, let's look at business pages on Facebook. Um, I belong to about little over a hundred. I liked those pages. I became fan. Um, I monitored them and now I belong to three and that's in the last year. And you're thinking, oh my gosh, why is that? The reason for that is because all they're doing is promoting all the time and I'm sick of seeing it. I don't want to buy their product or service. They're not giving me any good value. They're not teaching me anything. They're not helping me in my everyday business life. They're not giving me good tools to use to draw me in. They're just promoting and promoting and promoting. And I don't care. To be quite honest, I don't want to spend my money with a company who isn't going to give me something in return. It's a give and take relationship. And if you can't figure out that balance, you will not be successful. And this just isn't me. Um, I have monitored all of my clients' websites, all of their social media networks. I have tons of friends who use social media in their businesses, and I see this trend happening over and over and over again. On LinkedIn, I just posted a post, and I put up there a couple questions, and I said, are you sick of social media? Are you actually getting anything out of it for your business? Are you making sales? Or are you just annoying people? And so I had a good response. I had a lot of people that wrote back. A lot of people wrote back privately because they didn't want to make their company look bad. And now I'm helping them with a marketing plan, which is what we're going to talk about today in great detail. So if you're thinking that today's webinar was just going to be a brief introduction to a marketing, social media marketing plan, it's not. I'm going to get into nitty gritty details of how to do it. And we're probably going to go over the hour that we allotted for this webinar. And I just want to do that because I don't want to be producing fluff anymore. I want to be actually giving companies good, useful information. I just don't want you to sign up for my free webinar, get a lot of fluff. You know, it is useful information, but not very detailed because I want you to sign up for a package or a campaign or whatever we're selling. I don't want to be categorized into that group. So I want to break out of the mold. And so that's what we're doing today. So if you didn't expect that, um, this webinar will be recorded and it will be available on our website for viewing. Um, and you'll be able to view it whenever. And so if it's too much for you to handle today and you just want to sit back and watch a webinar and not take any notes, um, you're probably just going to want to log out right now and watch it at your leisure when you can uh, because it's going to be very detailed. So to kind of get to the point where you can start a marketing plan, you just can't jump into it. Okay, there are several steps that you have to do in order to get to that point, especially with social media. And so the first step is to start a pretty basic marketing plan, which we're gonna go into today. You also have to build a team of support. So if you're a one-man show at your business because you're a new startup, this isn't gonna work because there's no way that you are going to be able to do it on your own. You're gonna need a team, you're gonna need help. Um, so if you don't have that established, you need to get it established. You need to have at least three to four people on your team. A lot has to do with their backgrounds of how successful you're going to be. So if they have marketing backgrounds, that is going to be very useful to you. If they have social media backgrounds, that's even going to be more of a plus. If you don't have these people with these types of backgrounds, then you need to get people on your team that do. Step two is you have to join social media platforms. Now, the ones that have worked for our company and our 2,500 clients 
our Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. Those are the three main ones, and we also incorporate YouTube now um, if it's appropriate for the business. And we can do useful videos, and we're just not doing promotions. But Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn really jumpstart our company. We started our company in 2008 and was right when the economy tanked. And social media really brought our company out of that, helped us to gain business and long-term clients, which we have now still today. Step three is integrating a company blog. And so if you're not sure what I mean by that, um, you're going to have to watch our blog integration video uh, webinar. Uh, basically what it is is just integrating a blog into your business website. And so if you go to Citra Research's site, you'll see what that is. Stage four is start building your network. Start getting those relationships going. Get that communication going as well between you and your customers. And step five is to get the buzz out. Yes, you have to do a little bit of promotion, but there's a tactful way to do it without just saying, oh, we have this deal this week, sign up. Or, oh, we're selling this, come buy it, you need it. There's tactful ways to do it. Step six is post relevant content. So this kind of goes into that as well, self-promotion. You want to be giving potential customers good, useful information that will help them. For one that establishes you as an expert, and we have a whole webinar on that as well, um, it also helps to show that you are on top of your industry, you understand everything that's happening within your industry, and that makes you an expert as well. But three, it also shows that you're not just about self-promoting. You're about giving good, useful information to potential customers, and it shows that you want to help them, not just take their money. Stage seven is start conversations, start relationship building. You did that in stage four, but in stage seven, after all of this is established, you get to build even more significant relationships. How many of you, well, all of you have a LinkedIn account because that's how you learned about today's webinar. Um, so how many of you on LinkedIn really have good, useful relationships that you started using LinkedIn? Think about it. You all have a number. And I can guarantee that the number is under five. So you have to build good relationships. That just isn't emailing back and forth. It's where you've taken the conversation from LinkedIn and you've taken it to the phone or you've taken it to go to a meeting, or you've met in person, or you're actually exchanging information now, talking weekly. That's establishing a good working relationship by using a social network. The bottom line is building relationships. A company wants to start building relationships right away, but in order to do that, you have to have a social media marketing strategy, and you have to join networks. From there, you can post to social media outlets. But post interesting, attention-grabbing content, videos, URLs, articles, blog posts, etc. Useful, good information. Because the outcome of that will be that you will build good, significant relationships and you'll grow your network of followers as well. So what are the stages of relationship building? We have a whole webinar on this, and it's called Establishing Yourself as an Expert. And that's stage one. Watch that webinar. Um, it's on our recordings page, and it actually shows you how to use each social media outlet, what to post, all of that good information. Stage two is posting interesting and relevant content. You want to make sure that content is helping your current network of people, not just promoting yourself. You have to gauge with metrics what your network wants. So the people who are your fans on your Facebook fan page for your company, what do they want? Stage three is start discussions. Get the conversation going. See what they want. See what they're having problems with because you can help them. That's exactly what I did with that post that I put on LinkedIn. I said, are you sick of social media? Is it actually working for you? Are you getting any business from it? And it started this whole conversation of people who are like, yeah, I'm kind of sick of it. You know, all these self-promotions, yada, yada. Or I have a social media team and it's just not working and I'm not sure what's going wrong. That gave me the opportunity to email them back and say, well, tell me, you know, let's set up a phone conversation. You can tell me more about what you guys are doing at your company. 
And then I got to talk to them on the phone and I got to listen to their story, write down exactly where they went wrong and give that information to them. And I got some consulting hours out of that. It was useful and it helped them as well. Got them to actually think about something. So after you start discussion, stage four is contribute and maintain a pulse on all social media platforms. What I mean by maintain a pulse is just don't post something, have people write back and don't respond to them. You have to keep the conversation going. They have to know you're alive, that you want to keep the conversation going, that you want to keep talking to them. So the best way to do this, I mean, I'm vice president of our company. Dr. Sheridan and I are have our hands in everything in the company. And so I have to establish a schedule that works for me. So I set aside time in the morning, I set aside time in the afternoon, and I set aside time in the evening so that I maintain a pulse on these social media outlets. And it isn't a lot of time. It's maybe 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes. But people know that I'm there. People know that I care. And people know that I want to keep the conversation going. And lastly, stage five in establishing a relationship is offer advice. So what we're going to go over is a social media marketing plan. We're going to go over the steps, how to get there, and how to get started. So if you didn't have your notebook out yet, or a pad of paper, or your iPad, or whatever you're taking notes on today, please do so now. This is where we're going to get into the nitty-gritty. Nitty so we want to network together. We all want to help one another gain business by using social media. We have to work together as a team to make social media, to make a social media marketing plan come together. So you have to have that team in place. If you're a one man show, this isn't going to work. You're going to have to outsource. You're going to have to hire a company like Situated Research to help you to do this then, which isn't a bad thing, but it is a little costly. It is going to cost you. So, um, you know, having that team yourself would be great. And if you don't have it, you know, definitely contact us and we can help you to get started. So this diagram that I found is helping you to develop a social networking business strategy. You have to have one in order to get started. You have to be, you have to have social networking in the middle. You have to figure out your opportunities. What are your objectives? The content that you're going to produce and put up. How are you going to participate? How are you going to build a network? How are you going to develop that network? So this is a pretty detailed diagram here. We go into great detail of it in the course and how you can take any type of business and apply it to this diagram. So I'm going to not dwell on this, but uh, you do need to know that all of these steps are encompassed into a social network strategy. You also have to develop your sales contact strategy. So after you get these people and you've got them interested, what's the sales process? How do you go about that? Um, you just don't start promoting yourself and doing self promotions or you get people, you lose people. So you have to come up with a strategy. So you have to incorporate, you have to look at your company's sales cycle. You have to look at your accountants. You have to look at their knowledge. You have to look at your market, your clients' needs, questions, bring up evidence, find positive feedback, find out what people are saying about you on social networks. So all of this is encompassed as well. I'm not going through it today because in the course, this takes about 30 minutes to go through. So just know that all of this is involved as well, because once you get those people in, what's your sales strategy? So you want to ensure that sales and marketing use social networking sites, tools and technologies to help the organization achieve its objectives. So everybody has to work together. This is what I'm talking about. Marketing, sales department, management, everyone has to work together because if they're not working together like a puzzle piece, which is the theme of this PowerPoint, um, it's not going to work. It's not going to mesh together. It's not going to be a whole piece. It's not going to work. So you have to have all of these pieces aligned together, working together on the same page. 
So your social network application areas for sales and marketing, you have your sales, you have new business, and then you turn those into customers. So there's a whole way to do this and a whole plan that we come up with, with for any type of business. And this is how we do it. So we look at your personal networking or lead generation. We look at how your business has been developed, your branding. We look at your RFP support as well. And then we look at account management, channel development, customer service. All of this is encompassed into sales. Then we move to new business. We look at campaigns that you're doing right now currently. We look at your brand again, your corporate networking. We look at all of this and how you're converting all of this into customers. Then after we do that, we look at your current customers. We do some customer research. We look at the customer satisfaction. What are they saying? Any news, advisory panels, anything like that. All of these pieces all come together when looking at the social media marketing plan. And it all has to do again with marketing. So social networking implementation plan. These are the key elements. So this is um, you know, something if you get the recording that you can go ahead and take a screenshot of and print for your company and go through business needs and goals. Go through your possible networks and platforms that you currently have in place. Go through your roles and resources. Go through this whole page with your team. The whole marketing plan goes through the process with your team. So if you have a small business, it's just not going to be you doing it. You have to have your team together and you have to be doing all of this together. So let's introduce the steps to the social media plan. And I see that some people have questions. We're going to get to those at the very end when we do Q&A. So as you have questions, certainly type them in. So that way, if we need to go back to a slide, we can go ahead and do that. So the first step is pre-planning. We have to come together with the team to form a plan for your marketing strategy. If situated research is involved within this step, uh, we still have your whole team there. So we all meet. You start the conversation. You start to listen to the conversation. So see what your different departments, your sales, your marketing, your management teams have to say to you. Even get customer service involved as well if you do have that department because that's really going to help you as well to know what your current customers think of your product. Next is profiling. You're going to create your target profile, your potential customer. What do they look like? You're going to establish goals. You're going to set specific goals for your company. Then you're going to join the conversation and measure ROI. So let's talk about step one, pre-planning. So this is where you have your team. You're going to establish who's going to be on your team. And then you have, question, you have these questions here that you're going to be asking. How does information flow in my industry? So not in your company, but in your industry. This is going to take some research. And so situated research is good for that because we do do that for companies. We will do your competitor's research for you and give that information to you. So that's useful. But you can also do it yourself. Question two is where do people get their information from? Where do they get their information from about your industry, about your company? A question three is how do consumers interact in your industry? Do they? Maybe they don't. Maybe they just buy the product and they're done. Question four is do they hang out in networks? And if so, what networks more specifically? Question five is what influences your customers, your specific customers, not customers within your industry, but within your company? Then you have to look at what channels are you currently using? What are the efforts that your company is using now? Typically what we see is email, direct mail, newsletters. You're using their website and doing some online ads. This is typical story of what we see. Yes, people are still doing direct mailings. Why? I don't know, but they're still doing it. They think that they get business out of it. Um, I'll tell you what, from personal experience, I get promotional items in the mail. I don't even look at it. I check it. 
Um, if I need a coupon for something like haircuts, um, something for my home, I will look at my little value pack that comes once a month and see if there's anything in there for what I'm looking for, but I won't look at the other stuff. I'll just chuck it. So if you're sending out postcards, they're getting chucked in the trash, people. Don't do it anymore. Don't waste your money anymore. You're not getting anything from it. Um, a lot of people can't even measure if they're getting anything from it. I'm telling you from experience, you're not. Uh, people are throwing it out. Online ads, please. When you go to a website and you have these online ads popping up or you go to Google and the ads are popping up, do you look at it? No. No one does. Usability research, which is what Citra Research is all about, shows that users 95% of the time don't look. And the other 5% of the time are kids who click on those ads so that you get charged because they're pay-per-click. So every time someone clicks on the ad, you're getting charged for it. So it doesn't work. Newsletters. It Seriously, use um, Constant Contact or MailChimp or something like that. A program that will evaluate how many people you're sending your newsletter to and how many people are actually opening it. It's very eye-opening. Um, you know, and if you're doing a lot of self-promoting, that number is going to be very, very small. So newsletters, I mean, so we still do newsletters, um, you know, just because we want to give good information to our subscribers. But, you know, in the 2,500 businesses that we've been working with, they're all like, oh, I want a newsletter, I want a newsletter. It's all about self-promotion. Um, and we're like, no, this isn't good content. You got to put something in there that's going to help your customers. Otherwise, it's not going to work. And they're like, oh, but we, we have this coming up and this event. And it's like, people don't care. They can go to the website and see that information. They want good information in the newsletter that's going to help them. So ask questions. This reminds you who you are and who you want to be within your company. It also indicates how social media can be used to complement your business goals. So in the Social Media 101 course, after um, each, we have 10 videos in the course. Um, split into five days, so two videos per day. And each video is split into parts. So after each part, we do an exercise. So the exercise at this point would be to make a list of questions for your company. Come up with 10 questions. Get the ball rolling for your marketing plan discussion and start the pre-planning process today. So that would be my goal for you guys today is to come up with those 10 questions. And if you're not the decision maker on this and you just wanted to attend today to kind of put this together on your own and present it to your boss or whatever the case may be, still do these exercises because it's going to show that you care, that you learned something from today's session, um, and that you want to get the ball rolling. So this would be your first exercise to do. And if you come up with the 10 questions and you're not sure if they're good enough, you can email them to me. And I'll give you that information at the end. I'd be happy to just look at it for you. Step two is listen to the conversation. So how do you do this? What does this even mean? You have to secure your brand on social media platforms, on blogs, Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever. You have to make sure that your usernames are unique. So if you are just establishing these accounts, that's very important. We have free webinars on how to do that. So if you're not sure how to do that and your company hasn't done it yet, check it out. But be consistent in those usernames. Set up monitoring platforms. Google Analytics is awesome. It's free. Wow, something for free in this down economy. Yes, Google Analytics is free and it's a great useful tool. We use Google Analytics with every business that we help. We set it up within their website to see where traffic's coming from. We can put in any social media marketing campaign and monitor it. It's awesome for that. I mean, what's the point of coming up with this whole plan and doing it if you can't monitor the results? There's also um, a platform out there called socialmention.com. You could use that as well. Our experience is that Google Analytics is awesome for this. Also, you wanna use special queries. 
this is once you get into Google Analytics, um, how you monitor your campaigns. So I'm not really going to go into this. We also go into this in the social media course. Um, but for today's purposes, I'm not going to go into it. You also want to do keyword categories to identify. So you want to come up with keywords within your industry that influence your customers. What are your competitors using? This means that you have to look at their websites and you have to have someone who can look at their code. Um, and it's very easy to do. Anyone can do it. You just go to your competitor's website, right click, and then click view page source. And what that does is it brings up the code for the page that you're on. So you'd have to do this for each page of their website. And this is research related. Um, but in like the first five lines, you'll see the line that says keywords and see what they have. And there's your research. Um, if you can't figure this out or you can't do it or you don't have time to do it, contact us and we just charge a small fee to give you the list of keywords for you. Um, look at industry news sources as well, and look at blog comments. So the exercise at this point then would be to secure your brand. Set up those monitoring channels. So set up Google Analytics on your company's website. Go on social networks and secure your brand. Figure out what your competitors are doing. Now step three is create your target profile. A lot of customers that we have him and haw over this, they're like, ah, oh, well, why is this useful? Who, who cares? You have to know the profile of your potential customer in order to target them. There's so much research that's involved in doing this. And everybody's like, I thought I was just coming up with some marketing plan and a little schedule here. Um, I'm not really too sure why this is important. Um, it's very important. You have to figure out who your target audience is. Um, is it, you know, 24 to 50 year old males, you know, and if it is, you know, how much spending power do they have? Well, it turns out they've got $350 billion in spending power. It turns out that between 16 and 19 hours, they're online. And 96% of them have joined social networks. Ding, 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 ding. That's important information for you. 78% trust their peer recommendations. So if they're on Facebook and their friends are telling them, you know, they're saying, oh, I want to buy a new vacuum. And they say, I'm going to buy this brand. And a bunch of people say, oh, don't buy that, that brand of vacuum. I had a horrible experience, blah, blah, blah. They're not going to buy it. And only 14% of them trust advertisements online. That's very small. So that tells you that those paper clicks don't work. And they belong to Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and they subscribe to blogs. So this is a typical target profile. This is information that you need to know. So if your target audience is males, age 24 to 50, here's your information. So you want to find when doing your target profile of your potential customer, you want to find key attributes from listening online. You can chart out their presence in social media. You can even follow them. You can continue to gather customer information along the way. You want to get your market segmentation, so your demographic. You need to figure out the age of your customers, the gender, family size, social class, income. Geographically, where are they? What's the population of the area that they live in? What's the climate? What's the psychographic? What are their activities? What are their interests, opinions, attitudes? Their behavioralistics are, you know, brand loyalty, benefits, um, readiness to buy. Do they like to buy things on the fly, um, on the impulse, or do they take a long time to make their decisions? This is all important information for you to know. So the exercise here would be to establish your target profiles. Come up with at least three. You can even give them names, photos, or anything else that would help you relate to them as a real person because they are. They're your potential customer. Step four is to set specific goals. 
So you have to have a goal in order to reach something. So your goal for your social media marketing plan shouldn't be, oh, I want to generate more income for my business. That's my goal. Okay. That's everyone's goal. That's kind of like, duh. That's everyone's goal. You have to have real goals and you have to have goals for each department of your company. You have to have brand awareness and advocacy. You have to increase traffic to your website, to your company. You have to build business partnerships. You have to think about search engine results as well. So once you get on these social media platforms and these people are coming to your website, how are people finding your website? Are they able to do it? How are you going to generate leads? What are your goals going to be? How are you going to reduce CRM costs? And lastly, then you should think about increasing revenue. Because if you don't do all of these other things and you don't come up with goals, you're not going to increase revenue. So when we talk about brand awareness and advocacy, we're looking at contests a lot of people do sometimes. So um, that's a good way to start. What will be your contest? What will the winner get? What do you want to get out of the contest? Um, you know, with contests, you get a list of people. Um, their email addresses. And so then that's good to give them some information, some lead nurturing. We have a free webinar on lead nurturing and how to do that. Uh, so check that out as well. And that gives you good, useful information and a long list of things that you can give out to lead nurture. Get the buzz around a new product or service is another way to get brand awareness. Negative or positive buzz doesn't matter. Get the buzz going. Which products or services will you put out there? And make all of this fun. Um, last year, we did a survey using SurveyMonkey um, to gain information on people's practices using social media. And what we did is we said, okay, everyone who participates will be put, their email address will be put into a bowl. We'll pick out a winner and they'll win a free website. And that's what we did. And it made it fun. And we had a huge response. We had over 800 people um, fill out the survey and participate. We had one winner. And they, we made them a great WordPress website. And they're very happy with it. And it also helped us because we got a list of 800 email addresses. Now, that didn't mean that we took those 800 email addresses and bombarded them with self-promotional information all the time. We did it one time and it wasn't self-promotion. We actually gave them information on social media and how to improve their efforts. And did we get everyone to respond back? No. A lot of people said, oh, delete me from your email list. And so, of course, we did. Um, but the majority, I would say about 300 of those people emailed us and said, I didn't win the free website, but I do need help with my website, or I need help with search engine optimization, or I need help with our social media marketing plan, or I need help with usability, whatever it was. So we got a lot of business from that. And that was just putting up a free survey and saying, we're gonna put your email in a pool, and if you win, you get a free website. So it was fun, it was interactive, we got the information that we needed, and as a bonus, we got over 300 clients. So it works. You have to also look at business partnerships. So discussion contribution, what posts do you want to contribute to? How are you gonna establish yourself as an expert? So again, if you're not sure what I'm talking about there, watch that free webinar on how to establish yourself as an expert through social media. You have to also help out as many people as you can. You have to give something in order to get something. It's a give and take relationship. So give advice and figure out who do you give advice to. LinkedIn is a great platform for this. People post questions all the time. Uh, do you know someone who can help me with my website? Um, I'm using Facebook, but I'm not getting many leads from it. You know, anything where you can help people is good because they're going to return that favor to you. 
You can also then take the conversation, like I said before, and start talking through email or the phone. The biggest thing is you want to increase traffic to your website. You want to lead generate. The way to do this is to do free giveaways. And if you're going to do that, think about what do you give away? Who do you give away to and why give anything away? So at the beginning of today's session, I said, if you tell people about this webinar today and they sign up for our social media marketing 101 course, I'll give you a $50 Amazon gift card. So we thought about how many people signed up for today's webinar. We thought about how many people would actually refer people. And then we thought about what would be a good giveaway. Boom, 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 boom. So there's steps to everything. Promotions. What promotions are you going to do? Who should you target? Contests and then surveys. Like I just explained how that survey worked out that we did. Now, gaining traffic to your website involves search engine optimization. So how people find you on the Internet. So you have to look at what your page ranking is right now. And you have to look at, okay, what do I want it to be? How do you get it to that page ranking that you want? So by using WebsiteGrader.com, and like I said, these slides are taken from the course, so we talk about that in the next day, how to use it. Um, but it's a great tool to help you actually learn what your search engine optimization is, where you're at right now, and how you can improve it. The bottom line is you want to generate leads. You want to carry out research to find your customers in social media space. And you want to be there too. Remember, maintain a pulse. You want to develop a social networking strategy document ensuring that the strategy links with your current marketing and sales activity and business goals are together. They're infused together. They're working together. As far as marketing, you want to focus on thought leadership to carve out niche customer segments. And you have to allocate a budget. Sometimes you have to consider outsourcing because sometimes you just don't have the time to do all of this. You can't make the time. Or you want to delegate to your team and they just don't have the time. You have to utilize give to get. So that give and take relationship. And we talk more about that on the last day of the course, um, but it's very important to learn how to balance that relationship. You also have to plan and prepare for relevant content, so what you're going to post, and how to grow your networks. So how do you reduce CRM costs? You're going to want to increase in customer service. You want to establish customer loyalty and trust. So increase efficiency, increase success stories, get your cost reduction down and customer retention, get adequate CRM training. You also want to lower operating costs through a workforce management system, and this will aid in the marketing department as well. So all these things encompass together. So really with the goals of the marketing plan, you should reduce your CRM costs by doing all of these things. So questions to ask while establishing your CRM goals are what are your main goals and objectives? And all need to contribute to overall success. Everyone needs to contribute. Who is your audience? Each goal will have to have a target audience. And then communicate effectively to that audience. Lastly, what is the best way to achieve these goals? You have to look at various strategies, look at the pros and cons, and put implement that plan. Next, how will you accomplish your CRM goals? You have to focus on the chosen strategy that your team has picked. And you have to understand the various steps involved in the strategy. Lastly, you have to measure success. All of this isn't important if you can't measure it. So this can be done by accessing the actual achievement of goals through metrics, using tools like Google Analytics, 
or outsourcing and hiring a team like Situa Research that can give you weekly reports on this information. And lastly, we said increased revenue. So you have to define who you are trying to reach out to and your end goal as a result of the outreach. Are you using social media to increase sales? Define your target audience, make those profiles, reach out to them using the search mechanisms on Facebook, Twitter, etc. Listen to what's important to them. Engage in dialogue, maintain that pulse. And after spending time listening and engaging in conversation, craft your plan. Get your strategy implemented. So an exercise at this point would be to write down your company goals. And in the course, um, the course is recorded. So it is uh, 10 videos, five days long, two videos each day. And you can watch it at your leisure for one month. So we give you a login for a month and you can log in and out whenever you want. Um, so it's not live, it's pre-recorded, uh, but you get to do it at your leisure. So that's kind of nice. So at this point, we'd have you write down your company goals and then you would email those to a specific person and they would be your person here at Situa Research that would help you to develop your marketing plan. So they'd go over your company goals and do a consulting meeting with you and all of that is included in the course. So it's kind of neat. Um, if you don't take the course and you're doing these exercises, you can feel free to email me and I can give you some information. Um, and if you need consulting hours, we can do that too. Step five in making the social media marketing plan is to join the conversation. So there's phases of social equity. You have to build awareness engage, and engagement and then social commerce. So awareness is first. Uh, low equity. It's value and it's fun. Um, you get to qualify fans and followers. You get to start building your little network on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Twitter, or YouTube. And you start to build that fan base. You start to get people to notice it. And you start to see the numbers go up. Engagement's what's going to keep those numbers up and keep those people there. So this is medium equity. Um, you get to increase long-term communication during this step. And lastly, is social commerce. So high equity, product reviews, um, exclusive pricing, product previews, registration, et cetera, et cetera. The biggest thing in all this is to establish an editorial calendar. So you have to choose a specific schedule for days you will be posting. So like I said, I schedule every day in the morning, afternoon, and night. You don't have to do that. You could schedule two days a week. It depends on how you're going to be engaged. Remember, you're going to have a whole team. So you could say, okay, I'll take Monday and Tuesday, 20 minutes. Uh, you take marketing, you take Wednesday, Thursday. And sales, you take Friday. Let's do 20 minutes each. That keeps it going. Um, so it helps you to stay on track and organize your content. You also need to make a list of the content that you're going to post, and you need to be consistent. You can't post every day of the week. You only post um, every couple days. I say Monday and Friday is when to post. Um, every business is different, though, and that's something that would be established in your marketing plan. But be consistent. Just don't do Monday and Friday, and then the next week don't do anything. And then the next week do Tuesday. You have to be consistent because your followers are going to expect to see new content on certain days and they're going to get used to that schedule. And if they don't see it and you're inconsistent for a few weeks, they may unsubscribe. I've seen some people unsubscribe the first week they don't see it. So you have to be consistent. Refer to the calendar when you need content ideas as well. Um, a good thing to put on the calendar is, okay, Mondays. And Tuesdays, management's going to take over social media. And we're going to post information on blah, blah, blah. On Friday, sales department is going to post on blah, blah, blah. So if that's on the calendar and everyone has that, then that's good. Then you guys can remain consistent. 
when you're posting, be transparent and authentic. You're trying to gain trust through social media. People don't know you. People have no clue who you are. So don't be evasive. Offer your name, title, organization, experience, URL, whatever. Admit your interest in the topic, define your credibility, and be consistent across all social media outlets. That will gain you trust on social media. This is key to the whole success of your marketing plan. Think conversation, not campaign. Don't focus on selling. Ask questions and respond back. Provoke engaging dialogue and earn a good reputation. Um, Dr. Sheridan and I used to live in Hawaii on Oahu. And if you've ever lived in the islands, you know that your reputation, everyone knows because you're on a small island. Word spreads quickly. It's the same thing on social media. If you earn a bad reputation, it's going to spread like crazy. So make sure you earn a good reputation. And you can do that by doing the previous three items that we talked about. Be an expert. So take a look at that free webinar, Becoming an Expert. Be the expert in your industry. Write about what you know and offer insights to those who ask for it. Offer links to resources you find. Those authors might return the favor. When consumers trust your content, they'll trust your products and services. Have rules of engagement. Know what to do with negative comments. Not everything's going to be positive. So you have to know how to respond. You can't act defensive. You can't tell someone off on the internet because it's on there and it's on there for good. Determine who will be involved in responses. Make sure it's a person who isn't going to fly off the handle if their department's dissed on the internet. Admit mistakes when you make them because people will gain respect for you. And thank those who bring it to your attention. If you make a mistake, let's say you post something and the promotion was something different. It's on your website differently. And they say, hey, you said this, but on your website it says this. Admit your mistake. Say, thank you for bringing that to my attention. Showing that on the internet will gain you a good reputation. Respond kindly to everything. Turn brand detractors into advocates. If you can do that and show that on the internet, on social media, you're going to win everyone over. And if you disagree, give supporting documentation. So many times we post, either myself or Dr. Sherritt post something um, on usability research, and we have all these people, oh, that's not true, blah, 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 it's been our experience, this or that. And it's like, okay, well, we have this many clients that we've done work for, and this is what our research shows, and I have this to back it up, and so that's not true. And so you have to just have supporting documentation to prove your points. And you have to do it in a good, educated way, not just fly off the handle, be like, ah, you're wrong and we're right, and that's just the end to it. Well, who's going to follow us? Who's going to gain trust in us? No one. So don't do that. So your exercise at this point would be to create an editorial calendar for your team. Create those rules of engagement. Figure out the situations that you might get into. How are you going to handle it? And share your expectations with everyone who's involved on the team. Step six is measuring ROI. So how do you measure it? So first of all, what is ROI? It's return on investment. So if you have a non-financial institute, it's the number of visitors coming to your site, the page views, fans, followers. If you take in finances, you take in money, then it's your sales, revenue, transactions, coupons that are being used. ROI does not have to be money to be valuable. So you're a business, you're trying to make money. That's great. You can monitor that. Awesome. But the thing that you really want to look at is how many visitors are getting to your website? How many page views are you getting? 
How many fans do you have on your fan pages? How many followers are following you on Twitter and LinkedIn? Because that's gaining your reputa reputation within social networks. So you can look at measuring ROI qualitatively or quantitatively. Qualitatively, are you a part of your industry's conversation? How do your customers perceive you versus your competitors? Did you build good relationships? And are you moving from monologue to dialogue? Quantitatively, you can look at your web analytics and Google Analytics is a great tool for that. Also the social mentions, your SEO ranking, your link clicks on your website, newsletters, how many people are subscribing, email subscribers or newsletter subscribers. Those are all quantitative statistics that you can look at to figure out your ROI. So you wanna establish before, after your baseline. So what did your online environment look like before social media? Well, we had 7.5% growth. What does it look like now? Well, now we have 24.5% growth. That's typically what we see. What caused the increase or decrease? You have to look at all of this. And some people right now are sitting in this webinar and they're overwhelmed. They're like, there's no way that my team of four people can do this. I'm really overwhelmed. That's when you need to outsource. Develop activity timelines. So diagram exact dates in which key social media activities will occur. Any events that may impact any campaigns that you're running and your milestones. Make goals. Say we want 100 fans on our fan page by the end of the month. Uh, we want the first link with 100 clicks. Set milestones, set goals. Goals are very, very important, but make sure that they're achievable goals. You have to also look at key performance indicators when looking at ROI. Look at the number of transactions. Look at the number of new customers. Look at your sales, your revenue numbers. Look at your average order size. Funnel goal completions. Be specific. Look at the frequency, the reach, and the yield. How often, how many, and how much. You have to also have timelines. You have to overlay all timelines and look for patterns. So look for SM activities, look for SM data, website metrics, sales, loyalty metrics. All of this is important when doing your research for your campaign. You also have to prove those relationships. How were specific metrics related to social media efforts? You did a Facebook promo. How did that affect everything? You did a product launch. You offered a coupon. You did a contest on Twitter. All of these are great ideas. So the exercise at this point would be to track your key social media activities over time. Set up analytic tools like Google Analytics. Make necessary adjustments to increase qualitative first. Many times quantitative numbers follow qualitative efforts. And compare metrics to goals. So my advice to you is to take the social media marketing 101 course and if you don't want to do that then keep re-watching today's webinar and do exercise by exercise how are we going to measure social media well you have to look at what to measure you have to look at exposure influence engagement then look at conversions and core business. So we've kind of already gone through that in the last couple of slides, but this gives you one chart to show you everything. Now we're gonna look at the ROI calculation. ROI, return on investment. So your gain from your investment minus your cost of investment divided by your cost of investment. So what goes into the calculation will probably vary by company and what they think is acceptable to measure. So how do you calculate your gain from investment? You don't forget to calculate the economic value of your social media efforts. So if you have a team of people 
or you hired a social media person or you outsourced to a company like Situate Research, what are those costs? For example, the value of the number of subscribers to your blog equals cost per email for highly qualified list X numbers of subscribers. Cost reductions, no longer spending $20,000 per year on monthly publications or no, no longer spending X amount of dollars on focus groups or reduced spending in PR, or you cut your TV advertising or whatever it is. What's your savings in time? Some might measure awareness or customer satisfaction. Don't forget to measure time invested. As long as consistent for all marketing activities, the number of employees times hours divided by year times average employee cost per hour. Cost for training those employees to do this. Cost of measurement tools. Well, Google Analytics is free. So I'm giving you that one. Um, so there should be no cost. Um, but still, you have to have someone who can program it into your website because there's code that goes in there. Technology costs, hardware and software. Then you have to budget for a successful social media plan. And then some people say, wait, isn't Facebook free? That's my little joke. Um, after watching today's webinar, you should know that this is going to cost you something to come up with a marketing plan. You're just not going to go home tonight, rewatch this webinar, and come up with your marketing plan. It's just not going to work that way. You also have to determine your SM budget, so allocation versus addition. What are your goals? How much is your overall marketing budget? What tactics are you currently using and how are they working for you? What are your internal resources that you can use? How much time is it going to take from your staff's work week to do this? What is the design and branding that's going to be involved? You might have to come up with new landing pages for your website. What's that going to cost? Analytic tools. Again, this shouldn't even be in there because you all should be using Google Analytics. It's free. Use it. Social monitoring. How much is it going to cost an employee of yours to do that monitoring? Automation applications. Social media advertising, if you're going to do that. And if you're going to outsource or use consulting, how much is that going to cost? So there's levels of social media engagement. There's three levels. The first are your placeholders, your stakeholders, securing a username and sending out fan pages. Level two is your short-term promotion, answering questions, finding key influencers in your industry, doing your research. And level three is dedicated strategic engagement, active profiles on several platforms, promotions, contests, active content distribution. So now I'm going to give you some tips to get started. I want you to start with the platforms you can actively maintain. Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter. What outsourcing is needed? Do I need someone to come in to set those up for me? We can do that. We charge $5.99 to do that. We do it all the time. People say, oh, it's so easy. Some people can do it. So we do that. Um, do you need design of new landing pages? Do you need the development of that? Do you need content management, brand monitoring, audience research? I don't know who's involved within your company. I don't know if you have people who can do all of this. Plan your content flow and find tools to automate processes. So at the end of all of my webinars, I do some sort of offer. I always do it. Some may say, oh, it's self-promotion. I don't care. This course or this webinar that you watched today was part of the social media marketing course that I keep talking about. Again, it's a five-day course, 10 hours of videos. So it's two videos per day, and they're split into parts. You get exercises. You get free access to me and my team for $89. Normally, it's $99. Um, but it's 89 right now for everyone who's attending today. If you refer someone to the course, it's also $89 for them as well. You get access to the videos for one month, 
they're on demand. So you get your own personal login. You can log in anytime, watch the videos. At the end of the month, you can no longer log in. You also get a certificate for completing the course. All the activities and exercises you can send to us and we'll review with you. So you can go to our website at the link here. But if you go to the website, it's going to say $99. So you want to get it for $89. So email me. Um, but if you go to the website, it'll tell you each day and what we'll go over, tell you more about the, co about the course. If you want to sign up and get it for $89 or you want to refer a friend, email me at info at What we cover in the course are the core social media sites, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, Flickr, and Twitter. We want you to understand the importance of social media, Facebook marketing strategies, Twitter marketing strategies, and marketing with blogs. We show you how to build trust and maintain customer interest through lead nurturing. We also talk about the social media landscape, so utilizing specific social networks for discussion, reviews, or public relations. And we go over key social media strategies, publishing, sharing, co-creation of content. At the end of the course, you have a social media marketing plan. So each video takes you through each step in great detail. We go through case studies, um, clients that we've had, what's been successful, what hasn't been, testimonials, all that good stuff. Then we actually go through the marketing plan with you to make sure that you're going to be successful. So that's all included for $89. So now I'm going to do Q&A. So if you do have questions, which I did see a couple people had questions, um, we'll go ahead and do that. And then um, after that, um, what I'm going to do is leave you with our content information. Actually, let's put that up now. So we're Citra Research. Our email is info at situaresearch.com. And our phone number is listed there as well as our website address. Join our Facebook fan page because we have, um, we always put up there webinars that we're having. So our new webinar schedule. We also put up some promotional items, but encompassed within that, we also put uh, articles that will help you with social media, website design, usability, all that good information. You can also sign up for our newsletter if you'd like on our website. And we wanna thank you for attending. So I'm looking at Q&A and all I see is that um, one person couldn't hear me and then they could hear me later on. So that's good. Um, I don't see any other questions. So what I'm gonna do is leave you with our contact information. Again, this webinar was recorded, so it'll be up on our website over the weekend. And if for any reason it's not, I will go ahead and email you so that you know that. And email me if you wanna go ahead and attend the course for $89, um, or you wanna refer a friend. So thank you again for attending this afternoon. Sorry we went over a little bit, but there was good, useful information for you guys that I wanted to give you. So thank you again for attending. Have a wonderful weekend.